To learn how use reducer works, I think it's best to compare it to how use state works. So I have an application here that's using use state and I set up this app in a different video that I'll link to in the description. So if you're not familiar with use state or how it works with arrays of objects, go check out that video first. But basically I have an array of joke objects here and I have some actions that I can perform on these objects. So I can add a new joke into that array, which involves me calling the setter function here and updating the array. I can delete a joke using filter. I can like or dislike, which is modifying one of the joke objects by mapping over the array and then returning a new object. Uh, and I can sort through the array of joke objects. And this just looks like this app here where I can like, dislike, delete, and add in a new joke. HTML is a programming language. That's a good joke. So this is the application and currently it's using useState, but we're gonna switch this to use useReducer because useReducer is an alternative to using useState and useState actually uses useReducer under the hood. So use state is supposed to be simpler when we have simple pieces of state or not too many interactions with that state. But if we're doing a lot of things or our state is getting quite complex, it can be nicer to switch to use reducer. So when we use use reducer, we will need a reducer function. So I'm going to create a function here called jokes reducer. And this kind of function, these reducer functions take in the existing state and an action that we want to perform on that state. And this should return the new state that we need to have for our application. So action will usually be an object that contains all the information we need to update the state and state I'm going to rename to be jokes because this in this case is going to be the array of jokes. We're still working with the array of objects. Now action doesn't have to be an object, but usually it is an object that will contain the type of action that we want to perform on the piece of state that we have. So it's common to put this in a switch statement where each case is a string that we're passing in that will say what the action is gonna be. So often you'll see this done as an uppercase string. In this case, the action is adding a new joke to the array, uh, but I've seen it also done as lowercase and in the new React beta docs for use reducer, they suggest doing it lowercase but also kind of past tense, like what you have done. So here it wants to increment an age, so it's saying incremented age. So I guess I'm just gonna go with this format here, but you'll see it written in many different ways. It really doesn't matter, it's just a string that we're gonna pass in. And we'll see the other side of this soon. I just wanna show you what a reducer function looks like. So this would be added joke. Uh, and we're gonna have a case for each individual thing that we wanna perform on the jokes array. So I have adding, deleting, liking, disliking, and sorting. So I wanna have uh, an action for each of those. So I've deleted joke, uh, liked joke, disliked joke, and sorted joke. So we have a function, it takes in the jokes array, it takes in an action object, and it will perform whatever it needs to do on the existing state and return new state based on that. So I'm gonna start filling these in one by one as we start updating this app to use use reducer. So I'm gonna change use state to use reducer and I'll change this use state right here to use reducer. And the use reducer hook accepts a reducer function which like I said, accepts two parameters. One is the existing state and one is the action. And it also accepts some default state. So I'm gonna keep in this array of joke objects that I want as the default state for the jokes array. And then instead of setting jokes manually, this is a big part here. We're not gonna update the state directly from within the component. Instead, we get a function that we're gonna call dispatch and we don't update the state. What we do is we call dispatch with the action that we wanna perform. So right here before in my old set state code, but now what I'm gonna do is call the dispatch function with the type of action I wanna perform. So in this case, I'm gonna add a joke and I'm also gonna pass in any other information I need within this object. And this is all part of the action object here. So the type is gonna be the string that I wanna pass in. And then anything else on this object is just gonna be data that is needed for the reducer function to do whatever it needs to do. And in this case, it needs to create a new array that contains 
the existing jokes, I'm gonna throw this in here, uh, and the brand new joke that was added. So this is really all I need to do. I can return this new state here. So before I was setting state directly, now I'm having this function return that new state. And then in my component, I'm calling dispatch, telling it the type of action to perform and giving it any extra data that it needs. So if we continue to the next one here, I have deleted joke. Uh, when I'm using reducer, I'm not gonna set the state directly. Instead, I'm gonna call dispatch. I'm gonna pass in the type, which is deleted joke. And all the information it needs here is the ID of that joke. And then I expect the reducer function to do all of the logic in there, which is to filter through the jokes array to remove the joke with that ID. So I can take this logic as is, cut that out of here, uh, delete the setting there, and come up here to my delete joke case, and I'm gonna return, there we go, uh, the result of filtering through and removing the joke with that ID. So you're seeing here that the actual interaction with the state and the logic that updates the state is gonna go in the reducer function. Meanwhile, in our component, we're just gonna call dispatch with the action that we wanna perform. So let's keep going here and do all of these. So the next one is gonna be liked joke. Uh, so in my handle like, I'm just gonna call dispatch. Uh, the type is liked joke. And all we need for that is the ID because we're gonna do all of this logic right here. So delete that and put it in my reducer. So if I like a joke, I map over the jokes and I update that single joke. So I'm gonna do this and return it. So again, this function needs to return the new state. Uh, and all the rules still apply. We don't update the existing array. We always have to make a copy of that array and usually we use like filter or map to do that. Uh, but instead of setting the state, we just return that state out of this reducer function. Uh, liking is gonna be the same as disliking, except it's gonna be minus one. Uh, and I can update that in my component here. So instead of having to do the logic itself, it's just gonna dispatch type dislike joke and there's the ID. Uh, and then we've got one more here, which is sort. So dispatch type sorted jokes. And that doesn't need any extra data. It's just gonna say it wants to perform this action. So back up here, sorted jokes is gonna return a copy of the array sorted by, it looks like number of likes is how I was sorting them. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so all the logic that actually updates the state is now in this reducer function and my component just dispatches an action. So it just says what it wants to do. It wants to add a joke, delete, like, dislike, or sort the joke and that's it. So the logic is still the same. It's just been moved out of the component itself. It's now in that reducer function, but everything should act in the same way. So if we go back to the application, here, I'm gonna refresh and it's still exactly the same. So I can, uh, and that didn't work. It failed. Let's see in the console, uh, reference error ID is not defined on line 15. So let's see, blah, blah, blah. Oh, right, I copied and pasted exactly as it was. So the ID doesn't just exist in the scope anymore like it used to. Uh, any information that we need within the reducer is gonna be attached to this action object. So action.id, uh, it's gonna be the same here and here. And I think that might be it. So let's try now. So I'm gonna go back and refresh this. Uh, I'm gonna try liking, yep, I can like, I can dislike, I can delete, I can add a new joke. Nope, adding a new joke it didn't like because what I do, joke is not defined because it's not joke, it's action.joke. Okay, so remember that, that when you're moving your code from use state to use reducer, if you're already using use state, that all the information to actually update the state is gonna be on the action object. Um, but everything should now be working. <laughs> actually, that's funny, uh, HTML being the joke. So um, that's mean to HTML, HTML's fine. So that is the app fully refactored using use reducer. Now, one of the reasons you would wanna do this is because it does keep the component a little bit cleaner. So this component is no longer concerned with directly updating state. Anytime we need to do something with the jokes array, we just dispatch an action and this component becomes more dumb, which can be nice. This reducer function does contain all of that logic. It still exists, it's still all here. It's just been put somewhere else. And we can actually take this function out of this file. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a new file. I'm gonna call this jokes uh, reducer.js and paste this in here. 
and I'm gonna export default this uh, and import it into my app.jsx from use reducer, jokes reducer, there we go. Okay, so this definitely simplifies the component a little bit uh, because it's still obvious what we're doing. I'm, I'm handling a dislike and I'm dispatching the dislike to joke to something else. Uh, but then all of that state logic is managed by this reducer function. But something kind of cool to notice about this function is that it is a pure function that has nothing to do with React. So it is a function that accepts an array, it accepts an object that has some information on it, and it returns a new piece of state based on that. And that's it. It doesn't know about React. This code could be really easily unit tested. And that is kind of a really clean separation. We're taking this logic out. It doesn't know it's part of a React app, putting it in a reducer function. And now it's just isolated. And like I said, it could be very easily unit tested to make sure that when we do these things, they actually work. And then back in the component, we get all this simple stuff. So I think that use reducer can be handy. It can clean up your code a lot, but use reducer is just an alternative to use state and use state works fine for a lot of cases. And we should always start with use state because it is a little bit simpler to use. But if you do find yourself in a position where you've got all of this state updating logic and it's getting a little bit messy, you could then use a reducer function and your component becomes a little bit more dumb and that logic goes somewhere else. That's it for use reducer. If you like the videos I make, please make sure you subscribe and consider becoming a channel member to help me make even more videos like this one.